Independent origins moment number four, inbreeding and the biblical model of ancestry. For all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Okay, guys, here we go. We've got another moment. Independent Origins moment number four. And I'm excited for this one, okay? In the previous moment, Independent Origins moment number three, we discussed the low genetic diversity. The low genetic diversity that confirms what? Well, it confirms that we have all originated from just two people, Adam and Eve, just thousands of years ago. And as we know, as we covered in that moment, the low genetic diversity was exactly what biblical creationists expected to find. The evolutionary community, because of the evidence, had no choice but to resort to a hypothetical out of Africa population bottleneck in order to explain away the low genetic diversity found in human beings. This is essentially uh, storytelling. This is a rescue device. And it's an invention that was invoked, okay, simply to explain away the genetic related data, okay, the genetic related data that doesn't support ape to man evolution, nor does it support universal common ancestry in general, okay? So, as we know, according to their post hoc ad hoc story, it would have been highly damaging since it consisted of not just a one generation bottleneck followed by rapid and exponential population growth like us, like our model, okay? It consisted of an extended bottleneck, a prolonged bottleneck in order to reduce levels of genetic diversity that they did not predict, by the way. This is why it is exactly a post hoc ad hoc rescue device. It was essentially a near extinction event an event that was connected with severe inbreeding. And we know uh, genetically, we know what inbreeding does. We know what the effects are because these mutations, okay, they come to the forefront and they lead to rapid and accelerated genetic degeneration. They're manifested essentially because of inbreeding. This is not a good thing. And this is why this fairy tale that the evolutionary community invokes is not even not even somewhat okay not even somewhat reasonable and this is why those who hold to evolutionary theory and ape to man evolution okay this is why they have an unsolvable problem and this is the issue this is the issue with explaining all dna differences all dna diversity as a result of what as a result of mutations as a result of genetic mistakes over time essentially as we know and as we covered in independent origins moment number one we talked about the design diversity hypothesis that we start with the assumption that god would have front-loaded adam and eve which applies universally across the biblical kinds god would have front-loaded them with created nuclear heterozygosity because when god said to be fruitful and multiply did god mean for this to be carried out through cloning of course not of course not god did not say to be fruitful and clone yourselves he said be fruitful and multiply um, so this is why the starting point of design diversity makes sense both theologically and scientifically okay now here's here's what i find funny guys the fact that the critic will very frequently, and I've had almost a hundred debates and I have discussed and, and debated uh, the critic on this argument more times than I could count. Essentially, if I had a dollar for every time this argument was utilized by the critic, I'd be probably a trillionaire, to be honest with you. Uh, it's based on a straw man and a misrepresentation of our starting point and our model. Okay. The, the, the argument has to do with inbreeding, 
they'll say we have an inbreeding problem according to the biblical base model of ancestry and independent origins. Okay. Um, here's the, here's the thing though. As I said, it's based on a straw man. It's based on a rep misrepresentation. There's no problem at all. Let me briefly explain why we don't have a problem with inbreeding like the evolutionists do. Think about it. According to the model of independent origins, okay? According to our model of biblical ancestry, we start with just two people, Adam and Eve. Okay? Adam and Eve were specially created by God, okay? Just roughly 6,000 years ago. And then 10 generations later, we have a second Okay, a second bottleneck of what? Of just eight people. Okay, Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their wives. Okay, so eight people. At creation, since we hold to the design diversity hypothesis, Adam and Eve would have started with no mutations. No mutations. This goes back to genetic entropy, okay? We take this point of most accumulating mutational load, okay? This point of most genetic entropy. Okay. Take that back to a point in time of least accumulating mutations. Okay. A point of least genetic entropy, that would be point of creation. That would be this point of Adam and Eve with no mutations. Okay. So 10 generations later, we now have this second, another benign bobbleneck. Okay. It is a single generation bobbleneck also followed by rapid and exponential growth. Now remember, inbreeding reveals the hidden reservoir of genetic mistakes. If there are no genetic mistakes, okay, to be manifested, to lead to the negative and damaging problems that inbreeding results in, okay, according to our model, Adam and Eve would have had no mutations. And at the flood, there would have been some mutations, but not nearly enough to lead to the type of genetic degeneration that the evolutionary model would um, consist of, because remember the evolutionists explain all DNA differences as the result of mutations over time. So by the time they get to their bobbleneck, okay, they've had millions of years of mutation accumulation because adding mutations adds genetic diversity. So they explain the origin of genetic diversity, that natural selection can act upon this variation. Okay. They explain this as the result of mutation. So now they've got a ton of mutations that are just waiting to be manifested, just waiting to be revealed in order to lead to rapid, essentially, genetic degeneration. Okay, well, we explain the majority of DNA differences as a result of created nuclear heterozygosity, okay? So according to the biblical model, okay, both bottlenecks, creation and the flood, were extremely, extremely brief. Okay, just one generation. It's a one generation bottleneck, not an extended bottleneck like the evolutionary community believes in. And most importantly, it was followed up by explosive growth, rapid and exponential population growth. Okay, this means that most of the original created heterozygosity would not have been lost. They would have retained most of it, okay? Based on the fact that these bottlenecks were brief and followed up by rapid and exponential population growth. So the whole point is, guys, Okay. In both bottlenecks, you'd have almost no accumulated mutations. Okay. So no, uh, negative essentially, uh, inbreeding effects genetically. Okay. That means that the extremely limited genetic diversity is most consistent with the biblical base model. When God created two people automatically, this restricted genetic diversity and all of this genetic data that we now have did not have to be true. Okay, this is why we don't have to resort to fairy tale and far fetched mental, mental inventions in storytelling. Okay, it's the evolutionists, it's the evolutionists that have to resort to this type of storytelling. So, point is, the evolutionary model has the inbreeding problem. Okay, and the biblical model does not have an inbreeding problem for all the reasons that I've explained above. I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. If you are already subscribed to this channel, please share around to all your friends and family. And if you are not yet subscribed, but you love these types of videos, or maybe you love debates, interviews, and discussions, then please hit that subscribe button because the fun don't start until you subscribe to Standing for Truth. Thank you.